There are a few types of memory in your computer, all working in tandem to feed the different components in different ways. The most common is synchronous DRAM, commonly seen in the DDR modules that you'd slot in next to your CPU. Alternatively, you can also have DDR integrated into your motherboard, though this isn't really common outside of lower-end laptops and consoles where they aren't supposed to be user-upgradable. DDR gets its name from the NRZ signaling that sends two bits per transfer, effectively doubling the data rate from the older single data rate. Related to this memory is GDDR, short for graphics double data rate, in the sense that it uses capacitors to store the individual bits. However, when it comes to how the actual memory interfaces work, they function very differently both at the physical layers and control logic. Where DDR5 has a potential cast latency of 32 clocks at 6400 megatransfers per second, equating to about 10 nanoseconds of latency from entering your target address to bytes leaving the DRAM chip. GDDR by comparison clocks way higher, but also has a cast latency of around 130 nanoseconds at all clocks. What gives GDDR the edge is using multiple controllers at once and taking advantage of the higher clocks and bandwidth. Alternatively, your CPU and GPU also feature static RAM, which differs from dynamic RAM and how it's built and behaves in the system. SRAM is built of transistors, meaning that you can set a particular byte to whatever you want, and you can come back to it 20 minutes later as long as you don't kill the power or overwrite it. This solution ultimately draws more power, but has crazy fast access times as compared to DRAM. Your entire computer will probably only have a few megabytes of SRAM, but gigabytes of DRAM and terabytes of NAND flash. This all contributes to your system's memory hierarchy, which is a topic covered in this video here.